What up, everybody? Going fishing 804. Back at you again. Today we going over how to rig a a Cinco. A couple of my subscribers hit me up, you know, and they're just starting out bass fishing. So I just wanted to give you a couple tips, a couple tricks, you know, and just some general stuff on how I fish a Cinco. It's one of my favorite lures to throw, like throughout the season this lure is very versatile you can fish it many different ways so today I'm gonna go over the ways you can fish it how to rig it up and um, you know how to tie knots and all that good good juicy stuff if I leave anything out please leave it down in the description for the folks that are watching and don't know and if uh, you have any tips any tricks or something also leave that down in the description below so we can let everybody know how to make this thing catch bass um, I've caught huge fish off of just Cinco's um, worms uh, lizards um, brush hogs all this type of all these soft plastics that you see right here there are so many out there it's like ridiculous so the video would be like mad long if I went through all of them and went into detail about every single one so I'm gonna just give you a little general I guess idea try to help you out and um maybe you know it'll work out for you but um first thing I want to show you is the Yum Dinger. Now this is my favorite right here. This is my favorite worm to throw. Like uh, we have very cloudy water down here. It's not always clear. It's not always super muddy. But I find that this chartreuse tip, I think it's the chartreuse tip that just turns them on and makes them want to bite this. This is a uh, Carolina pumpkin and chartreuse it's made by yum and it's called a dinger it's a four inch dinger this is also a, a yum worm uh, I don't even know the color of this I think it's like green pumpkin and white I guess that would make sense right green pumpkin white um, another yum worm black and blue uh, this is another yum worm curl tail right here I've read I've seldomly throw this ever because that the yum dinger like I said works so phenomenally that I just don't find time to even want to try anything else if I want to catch a fish I go with the Carolina pumpkin chartreuse um, I also got another yum yum worm this is a this is a green pumpkin with the chartreuse tip it's a little bit small I think this is like a three inch you would throw this on like a, um, a Ned rig or if you feel that the fish aren't going to bite you know it's just a smaller it's a smaller profile than this one right here so it makes it you know just if your day ain't going your way and you think that they would eat something smaller then you would go with this three inch I rarely throw that too like I stick with this four inch worm right here and um, if I'm having any problems or ain't nothing biting I just break it in half and throw it back on there uh, something like a Ned rig something like a Ned rig but without the, the mushroom tip also we got the lizard this is also uh, this is a zoom magnum lizard I believe it's a 6 inch lizard June bug in color and during the spawn time I mean you really can throw this throughout the year but during spawn time I'm telling you this right here is a beast. They also have a um, a Carolina pumpkin and chartreuse that's dope too. That that curl tail starts moving on them when they spawn, and of course, because when they spawn, anything that goes near their nest, you know what I'm saying? They gonna they gonna smash it. They gonna eat it, get it out of there, and what have you. I also love like for cover and stuff. This brush hog, it's in June bug color. That works phenomenally. And um, this right here is a red shad brush hog. I throw this in clearer water. But um, those are all the worms that I got today. And um, now I'm going to go ahead and show you.
how I like to rig these worms up. Okay, so my favorite, my go-to, is hands down, is the VMC well, VMC rugby jig. And I put this on like everything, even my creature baits, all of that. This is primarily what I use on my worms. Um, now, how did how you hook this up? How you make this right is it's basically a, a Texas rig. I messed up already, but anyway, these are eighth ounce. I usually throw between a a quarter ounce. Now I'm between like an eighth of an ounce all the way up to a quarter. It just depends on how far, how far and how fast you're trying to get that lure out there. If you're fishing deep water, you want to go with a heavier weight because, of course, it'll sink faster. Um, medium depths, you know, seven to nine feet, I'll throw a quarter. Um, in shallow water, I mean, you can, you can get away with an eighth ounce because it doesn't have to go that travel that far to get down to the bottom so what I do is I take this rugby jig right there I like this rugby jig just for the simple fact that it it's like a, a football it's shaped like a football and this eyelet in here is recessed so when you when you're having to so when you setting the hook this hook ain't got no problem penetrating that fish's mouth because this eyelid is recessed. It ain't going to get hung up. He ain't going to be able to shake it. That thing is going right to the hook. And I also like these VMC hooks because they are sharp. They are extra sharp. So what I do is take this, get the top of my worm. Let me see if I can get it so y'all can see it. Take the top of my worm, push that down on there, maybe an eighth of an inch. Just right in the top, just like that. That's where you start at. Then you come out, and you come out the side of it. Bam. Come out the side of it like that. Slide her on up. Now, where, wherever it's coming out, wherever you want that hook to come out at, put it right there, push it up a little bit, slide it back down on there, in there like that, and you're golden. Now, you try to make this, it's a little bit crooked, but you're trying to make this as straight as possible for a, a natural, as a natural of a presentation as you can. In a minute, I'm going to show you another reason why. I love the VMC rugby jig. In a second, I got my makeshift lake set up. So in a minute, we're going to head to the lake and get in the water. Um, as you know, it's kind of cold out here right now. Well, at least in Virginia, is, there's no bodies of water that don't have ice on them. And I don't have access to a pool. So we're going to rock with this little makeshift lake. Y'all don't laugh at me. That's all I got trying to help y'all out. So boom, that's one setup, okay? That's your first setup with the VMC rugby jig, like that. Second way you can set these up, you can set them up with a bullet weight, like a tungsten bullet weight right here, and peg it to the top of the lure. I'm gonna show you how to do that in one second. Second way you can hook these up is just a regular hook. This is a number two extra wide gap. Um, I think it's a Gamagatsu hook. So I don't know the brand name of the hook, but this is just a two uh, extra wide gap worm hook. So you take that, then you you get your fishing line. While I'm here, I'm, I'm gonna show you a the knot that I tie for the majority, well, for like 90% of my tie-ons, I use this knot. I'm gonna show you, I think it's called an improved cinch knot. So I'm gonna show you how that works right quick. I wish I had a bigger piece of rope, but I searched all over the crib, couldn't find one. But anyway, take that, 
Slide that through that eyelet. Get that through that eyelet one time. Like that. Then you bring it out, bring it back down, bring it back down, slide it, come on now, work with me, work with me, slide it back through that eyelet. So that's what you got, you went through the eyelet two times. And you got you got a little loop in there, right here. Then what you do is you hold that loop, pull it in, pull it, tighten it down a little bit. Then take your tag in, that's your tag in, and wrap it once, twice, thrice. And then four times, I usually wrap it four times. And you got it wrapped around there, your incoming line. And this is your tag in. So you take your tag in, push it back through those two loops that you got. Grab your tag in, tighten it on down. Well, don't grab your tag in and just pull your incoming line. Pull your incoming, tighten it on down, and just wet it, make sure it's tight. And there you have it, that's the knot that I use for the majority of my uh, setups. And I tend to, I don't even cut that tag end off because I've had it before as when I'm setting the hook, that thing will just pull right out of there. So I try to leave a little excess on there just to make sure when I have a good hook set that this doesn't pull out and just pull my knot right on out. So that's the first setup with that. Then you take your bullet weight. Well, you would have slid it, you would have slid it on already, but I don't have it online, so. I mean, I don't have it on the pole. I just have string. So then you take the, the end of that, stick it down in that bullet weight. If I can get it out of here. Sometimes you got to wet it to get it to go. Bam. Got that. And there, there's your setup. That's how it's going to look. Like that. Now you take your worm the same as you did before. Take it. Put that top in. About an eighth of an inch. Like that. Come on out the side. Slide it up. That also protects your knot as well. Just sliding that up some. Then you just go like that. Put that back in there. And you're good. You are good. And this is your setup. That's the second way I like to fish it. Like that. And sometimes I'll put a bobber stop right here just so this weight will not move and hold that hold that in there like that. Alright, that's the one set up. Now, the third setup. You can fish these things with very little weight, little to no weight. I use um I tend to use weight on all my stuff. Sometimes I won't, but if I want it as weightless as possible. I'll get this. It's got a little like a sixteenth of an ounce uh, little lead weight on the back of it. So I'll take it. Just like before, I'll, I usually always rig my stuff 
Texas style. Um, you can rig it wacky. If you wanted to rig it wacky, you would have your line coming out here, obviously. And you would just sit it down there like that. And that's a wacky rig. But I fish so much structure and cover and stuff. I, I don't really use the wacky rig just because that hook is exposed. And um, if you're fishing the wacky rig, you want to you wanna keep popping your line so that the worm does not hit the, water, hit the bottom and, you know, get caught in structure and you end up losing your stuff. So that's another way to fish the worm. I've done it a, a few times and have been successful with it. So with all that said and done, that's how I rig my worms, my lizards, pretty much all my soft plastics. I go with those techniques right there. And um, now I'm gonna show you the technique of fishing the worm and what I do to uh, to make the fish feel like he's hungry, even when he's not. So, y'all just bear with me one second. We're going to be at the lake in a second. All right, guys. There's three ways that I like to fish the Senko. And um, hopefully these will be effective techniques for you. But um, the first one I'm going to start off with is just taking this, your Senko. And, of course, you let it all the way to the bottom and you just pop it just pop it up let it fall 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 and you can just move that every time you pop it up just reel in a little bit let it fall back down pop pop move it up let it fall back down and depending on how active the fish are the uh, quicker or slower you want to move it. Like super cold temperatures, you want to move that that thing really slow. You just want to barely, barely pop it. Let's move it down. The fish not going to be that active. They're going to be more lethargic. So you just want to pop it. Let it sit for a couple seconds. You might not even have to move it. Just throw it down there. Let it sit on the bottom. But um, that's one technique that I use very frequently. It's just popping it two or three times and you don't have to even move your rod that much you can just pop it a couple times and the the action is going you're going to impart a lot of action on the bait so that's all you got to do is just pop it a couple times and let it fall back down now the second time second thing i like to do and this is why i always mess with the uh vmc rugby jigs it's because no matter what, when you when you pull it up and let it hit the bottom, say it's hitting the bottom like that, it's gonna stand up just like that every time. You, every time you pop it up, it's gonna come up and then it's gonna sit down and that tail is gonna sit straight up. 90% of the time that tail will be sitting straight up and that chartreuse tip on this Carolina and pumpkin yum dinger worm is, is gonna attract the fish because it's sitting up like this. It's not laying, it's not laying down flat. You know what I'm saying? It'll be up like this so they can see it better sticking up out of the bottom, just hanging out right here, waiting to get munched on. So that's why I love the VMC rugby jig and that's why I use it 90% of the time. It's just because it sits up just like that. Right on the bottom, just like that. And you just pop that up and let it drop, pop it up, let it drop, pop it up, let it drop. Whatever cadence that you feel the fish is, is going to eat on, like I said, warmer, you can pop it up faster. You can move it a little bit more. Cold, slow down. Just slow your retrieve down some. And every time you pop it up, just reel it in a little bit. Pop, reel it in a little bit. Pop, let it reel it in a little bit. That's another technique I use. And the wacky rig for fishing it wacky if you got it like this you just kind of want to keep popping it up and letting it fall and when you pop it up it'll look like little wings you can fly this thing you know what I'm saying like it's like a radio flyer or something so you can fly this thing up and up and up in the water column and let it fall back down then come up 
come back up and let it fall back down. But if you're pitching structure and trees and grass and all that stuff, this is probably not going to work the best. That's why I, I primarily do Texas rig. It's weedless. No hook right there. The hook only comes out when a fish has bit it and you set it in its mouth. It doesn't it doesn't come out just dragging it across the bottom. So that's why I always go with the Texas rig. Um, you know what, guys? I, I, I think I didn't explain pretty all the techniques I use to fish a Cinco. Um, you saw how to fish it. Saw how to dang on, hook it up, set your rig up. So hopefully I gave you some great information and some great tips on how to use a Cinco. And like I said, if I left anything out, you got any questions for me, leave it down there in the comment section. And um, with that being said, I, I mean, oh yeah, keep your lines wet because it's all about the hook set. Later.